In my book, Dead Men's Secrets, I reveal the existence of immense tunnel systems beneath the surface of a great part of the earth, partly natural and partly artificial. In Turkey, for example, I explored the remains of vast underground complexes carved out of the earth in ancient times. Connecting routes linked, it's believed, 14 underground cities in that area. Friends who visited Spain reported to me that they were taken under the earth into the remains of an ancient city of three levels. Jerusalem is a city 4,000 years old. Tunnels, cisterns and such like honeycomb the area beneath the entire city and many of these remain unexplored. Under the Temple Mount alone are 32 caves and cisterns that are known. There are great vaults, secret doors and mysterious passages and the entrances to many of these have been carefully blocked. Passages wide enough for three men to walk abreast cut through the solid rock and connect the old temple site with Mount Zion half a mile away. Some of these remain unexplored. Another tunnel travels almost two miles from the Temple Mount to a spot near the Plaza Hotel in West Jerusalem. Near the Damascus Gate, at the entrance to Solomon's quarries, is a sign which suggests that one of the caved-in tunnels exiting from the quarries leads to the Temple Mount, and we are led to believe that the tunnel continues outside the city walls. Occasionally, a few adventurers with written government sanction have been allowed to enter some tunnels, but even then, those guarding the entrances were very reluctant to let them proceed. And here I learnt of a further rumour that in a secret chamber, deep beneath the Temple Mount, the Ark lay hidden. My investigation had led me into numerous localities in a number of countries. I became satisfied that the Ark had not gone to any of these places, that it had not been taken by the Babylonians or the Romans, and that it had not been destroyed either. According to tradition, the Ark and other temple treasures had remained hidden throughout the time of the Babylonian invasions, throughout the 70-year exile of the Jews in Babylonia, and also the entire Second Temple period. They remained hidden throughout the centuries while Jerusalem was under foreign domination, and they remained hidden to the present day. Among those who had sought to find the Ark were Adolf Hitler. His Nazis believed the Ark to be a mystical artefact which would give them supernatural powers over mankind. Mussolini also sought to capture the Ark. His fascist army conquered Ethiopia, but the Ark eluded him. A man named Eric von Däniken caused a sensation in the 70s when he claimed that the Ark of the Covenant was an extraterrestrial artefact. He asserted that people from outer space had colonised the Earth and that God was an ancient astronaut. The Ark, he thought, was an electrical conductor. Death from touching the Ark was simply from being electrocuted. Von Däniken speculated that if a replica of the Ark were to be made, it would function as a battery. However, I should state that von Däniken provided no evidence to substantiate his theory. As a matter of fact, replicas of the Ark have been made without any such electrical conductivity resulting. But more to the point, our original sources of information concerning the Ark refute such an idea. According to ancient Hebrew texts, the Ark had no independent power as a superweapon. It was powerless, in fact, to present its own capture by the enemy. Yet, the scriptures describe in fearful detail the swift judgment that befell any who dared to desecrate the Ark. When captured by the Philistines who lived along the Mediterranean coast, it brought disaster to whatever town hosted it. At Beth Shemesh, more than 70 Jewish men who lined up to peer into it died for their irreverence. The Ark was carried by poles inserted through rings at the base of the Ark. These poles remained permanently in place so as to avoid any need to touch the Ark itself when it was being set down or lifted up. So we may ask, what was the reason for such careful procedure? Apparently there was nothing inherently dangerous about the physical structure of the Ark. If we are to believe the ancient writings, the true power of the Ark rested only in the Divine Presence. The Hebrews held that the Creator of the universe was holy and that they were unholy. The Ark of the Covenant came to be known as God's earthly throne, so to speak.